Hello, Black Orlando Tech. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this conversation where we're honored to partner with Dr. Phillips High School Black Student Union. As we celebrate, introduce to you to some and a shout out to others, some phenomenal women in Central Florida doing some great things in our community. We're excited because tonight the ladies of Dr. Phillips High School Black Student Union are taking front and center stage to help us highlight some amazingly phenomenal women in Central Florida. So we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. We've got a lot to share with you tonight. Uh, my name is Kelda Senior. I am the PR and Communications Chair for Black Orlando Tech. And if you're not familiar with our community, Black Orlando Tech is an organization dedicated to the advancement of minorities, particularly Black minorities. And we do that through advocating for tech careers and entrepreneurial endeavors. Partnerships, pipelines, and programs are our three pillars to help us accomplish our mission of exposing uh, 10,000 minorities to Black career, to tech careers um, in the next five years. So we're excited to be with you tonight. We're going to share more information about Black Orlando Tech toward the latter part of our live. But tonight, we've got an amazing conversation, a couple of different conversations to get into. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, my partner in crime tonight, uh, Miss Anissa. Miss Anissa with Dr. Phillips High School Black Student Union. Anissa, welcome. I'm so excited to have you and all of the ladies here with us tonight. We've got some um, amazing conversations in store for our community tonight. So Anissa, uh, I want to give you an opportunity. Please introduce yourself briefly and tell everyone a little bit more about um, the Black Student Union at Dr. Phillips High. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Anissa Monet. I am a senior at Dr. Phillips High School, and I am the public relations manager for the Black Student Union here. Um, our organization was recently founded earlier this year, and it's been honestly a great accomplishment for many of the students. Um, I know that prior to this, we had a great exigence and a need for the Black Student Union, so to finally have it here and be able to collaborate with you guys tonight is amazing, and I want to say thank you. Um, so our mission statement and what we're really trying to do with our Black Student Union is to increase awareness and appreciation for Black issues at Dr. Phillips High School. Um, in the past, within OCPS and Dr. Phillips High School, there have been times where it felt like Black students' concerns weren't centered or they weren't being centered in academia and in their concerns with um, different things that were going on in the campus and so essentially the Black Student Union has had opportunities to allow Black students to be centered, allow their concerns to be heard, and kind of be a safe space for them to um, use this as a sounding board and just really thrive um, and just have a space to yeah, thrive. <laughs> and also to build the character among Black students at Dr. Phillips High School, we have a huge demographic of Black, Indigenous, and people of color. And specifically with our Black students, we noticed that we just needed to build something to bridge the gap between being at a magnet school, being in a highly populated area, and um, wanting to make sure that their concerns were addressed in class and that they just had a space to be themselves. Um, but yeah. That's our mission statement, and that's what we're all about. And so I'm more than happy to um, introduce Chelsea. Yes, to introduce Chelsea. Thank you very much, Miss Anissa. Good evening, beautiful, beautiful people, my STEM folk. Uh, my name is Chelsea Mendes. I'm in 10th grade at Dr. Phillips High School and a second year dual enrollment student at Valencia College, majoring in political science and international business law. I serve as the community service manager of Dr. Phillips High School Black Student Union, and I'll be interviewing Dr. Shante Barton Stubbs today. She is the founder and licensed therapist under Construction Empowerment Services, LLC, and the founder and director of New Image Youth Center. What a boss, right? <laughs> so I thank you, Dr. Stubbs, for joining us today. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? 
Yes, so thank you first off, Chelsea, for the warm introduction and for even being considered for this panel tonight. I am honored to be a part of such amazing women, many of whom I've also worked with and done business with before, and those who we just kind of come together and make it happen. So a little bit about myself, I uh, what you shared, but also that um, the director and founder of the New Image Youth Center, the AKA, the good in the hood. One of the not-for-profit organizations, one of the lasting standing organizations in the Paramore community, making sure that the kids of Paramore have exactly what they need to be safe, to be sound, to get through school, and to get to whatever that big why is, why were they presented. I am also an author of a few books, and the one that is most known is uh, There's Good in Our Hood. So again, thank you for the opportunity. I do have a little guest with me. Uh, he's still here. He's saying hi. <laughs> he's waiting for his ride. But um, just thank you again for the introduction and being a part. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asia, would you mind telling everyone about yourself and then introduce your guests? Yes, ma'am. Um, hi, everyone. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Asia Richardson. I am a senior at Dr. Phillips High School and I serve as the advancement officer of the Black City Union. So proud of myself. I am honored to be interviewing Ms. Shantia Lee for tonight's conversation. Ms. Shantia Lee is the founder of College Thriver Education, a business gear to help first generation and minority students. Ms. Shantia Lee, please tell us more about yourself. <laughs> Excellent job. You sound so professional. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations to all the graduates. And thank you so much for um, uh, giving us this shout out tonight. <clears throat> so um, just a little bit about me. Actually, I'm on the opposite side. So my foundation is actually brand new. We just hit one year of service. So this is definitely um, a big accolade because uh, we had a lot of headway in our first year. Um, I started College Thriver uh, because I do have, you know, over 10 years in college admissions and I realized it was always my minority students that were further behind than any other demographic and there was no real resource out there that could help them. Um, and I know the guidance counselors are overwhelmed, so I say, man, I should build it. And that's exactly what I did. So I'll tell you more about it in the interview. <laughs> love it, love it. Ruth, would you mind introducing yourself and your guest? Sorry. Yes, hello. My name is Ruth Charles. I am a sophomore at Dr. Phillips High School, and I'm in the Black Student Union Club. Today, I will be interviewing Maggie Gaines. She is the founder of Bright Light Consulting Club, and she is also a mentor for younger, younger girls. Maggie Gaines, please tell us about yourself. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for having me today. Um, I am excited to join everybody here tonight. Um, I am the founder of Saving Our Daughters Corp. We are a nonprofit based off of or um, Orange County and Seminole County, um, where we have been mentoring girls for the past nine years, um, basically helping them transition from that middle school stage to high school and eventually finding their path, whether that's college, whether that's anything i'm um, getting a trade and our goal is to have our girls transition out of the community and come back to impact the community in any way in any shape or form um again thank you so much for having me tonight i look forward to be with you all awesome thank you maggie maya would you please introduce yourself and your guests tonight Yes, I will, thank you. I am Maya Murillo, a 10th grader at Dr. Phillips High School, and I act as the marketing manager, sorry, of the Black Student Union. Um, today, I have the fabulous honor of interviewing Miss Anissa King, president and CEO of Miss slash Mrs. Corporate America, among many other positions in many or other organizations. Miss King, is there anything you'd like to share for our audience? Hi, Maya. Thanks so much for the introduction and hello to all the beautiful queens on the panel tonight. Um, so um, privilege and honor to share space with you. Again, uh, I am the president and CEO of the Miss and Mrs. Corporate America organization. We highlight corporate professionals and female founders that are making their mark within the community. We host an annual competition every year 
and we crown them as Miss or Mrs. Corporate America. So again, I'm so honored and privileged to be here tonight. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Anissa King for that introduction. Now let's go ahead and get right into the conversation. Chelsea, I'll toss it over to you to uh, present your, your first question to, um, to our guest. Yes, 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 of course. So our first question for Dr. Stubbs is uh, first a little bit of context. I think we know at this point um, that you don't have to test positive to feel stress or anxiety from this coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> and as a mental health counselor and founder and licensed therapist under your Construction Empowerment Services LLC, what tips could you share with our viewers about staying mentally and emotionally fit during this COVID-19 crisis? Definitely. Thank you so much for the question. So I personally feel that, number one, we need to be very aware of our emotional state, asking ourselves, you know how Wendy Williams say, how you doing? And I think we need to turn that question on ourselves to ask, how are we doing? How are we feeling? How are we thinking? Uh, what, what are we experiencing? And once we're able to identify and become more aware of what's going on with us, then we know more of what we may need. Um, I'm a firm believer and although we've had to be separated, a lot of us now just kind of communicating through screen. It is important for you to connect with those who you can connect with so that there is some kind of physical touch so that there is some kind of inter encounters that um, are, are more personal. Also, begin to do the things that you like to do that you normally would not have the time to do. One of the ways that we can relieve stress is being our authentic selves and being able to enjoy some of the things that we've kind of ignored. So personally, let me give you an example. Um, I'm an outside person. So I've learned to like take this time now. I'm outside. I'm barefooted, one with the grass. I am just enjoying the scenery. I'm taking deep breaths. I'm recognizing what I'm feeling. When I'm having a bad day, I'm OK with saying that. When I'm having a good day, I'm OK with sharing that. And I think that's um, more of the healing process of being transparent and understanding that every step that we're experiencing right now is going to take for you to be aware and then to acknowledge whatever it is that is best for you at that time. Thank you for that. And I'll pass it on to Miss Aisha. Thank you, Josie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is, for the fabulous Ms. Shanti Ali. My question is, what are the ups and downs of making your own successful business? Wow, do I have enough time for that today on this show? <laughs> um, that is a fantastic question. I would say for me, and I have to speak from a personal level, at first I did chase money, and I think that's the biggest obstacle um because you want to become this overnight sensation you want to be successful you want to be the first millionaire in your family um however i was not fulfilled until i chased my purpose so when it comes to the ups and downs number one please identify that you're in it for the right reason you're in it for purpose and not for money because i have a feeling that when you operate from the heart the money will flow the opportunities will show up but if you start and say oh i'm in it for millions i'm in it for money you're gonna burn out and then that's when the downside comes. Um, this being an entrepreneur is the most fulfilling thing I could have ever done and I don't even feel like I'm working. <laughs> so I think that if you're looking for something in entrepreneurship, definitely make sure you're operating from the heart. That, that's very inspiring, that's very amazing. I'm going to now pass it to Miss Ruth. Thank you, Ms. Asia. Um, my question for Ms. Gaines today is, what would you like people to know about Bright Light Consulting? Thank you. Well, for Bright Light Consulting, I want people to know that we are a nonprofit and business consulting firm um, where we help people start and maintain their business. We help people with their nonprofit filing, their nonprofit management, nonprofit development. Um, so if there's someone who has a nonprofit and they feel stuck, um, we basically put a strategic plan in place. And our, go and our goal is to help them get organized, strategized, and for them to eventually globalize their organization or their business. That's all. Thank you. Now I'll be passing it down to Ms. Maya. Thank you, Ruth. So for Ms. King, 
Um, modern society and I myself have this preconceived notion depicting the pageantry world and the corporate field as two completely distinct realms. What prompted you to seamlessly weave two very independent passions into a singular program that also tackles real world issues? Thank you so much, Maya, for that question. Um, growing up, um, I just noticed that there was a lot of um, women that were that did not hold a lot of leadership positions. So I wanted to be able to create a platform that really gave women in business, you know, their own stage, their own stage to shine. You know, in the corporate environment, you can obtain a pay raise, um, a, a job promotion, but I wanted to provide a platform where it really shined light on you know, their community involvement, you know, their contribution in the workforce um, and their aspirations to excel in whatever their hopes and their dreams are. Um, so I, I decided to com I decided to um, develop the Miss Misses in Corporate America competition to really create that platform to highlight women that are doing great things, whether they are a female founder or they work in the corporate environment. Because women in business, we have so many roles and we wear so many hats, but I think it's great to really take the time to honor our contribution and what we bring to the table. And thank you so much for that. Um, Chelsea, back on to you. Yes, it's I'm trying to find us on mute button. <laughs> but uh, yes, so thank you, Ms. King. And our second, well, pardon me, my second question uh, for Dr. Stubbs is, what are your thoughts of this following quote by the First Lady of the United States, American attorney and Grammy Award winning author, Michelle Obama? For me, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. I see it instead as forward motion, a means of evolving, a way to reach continuously towards a better self. The journey doesn't end. I ask this because reading your description, under Construction Empowerment Services, LLC. I was continually reminded of her memoir as people are commonly, commonly, pardon me, under construction throughout their lives. So what are your thoughts on that quote? Definitely, I 100% agree with First Lady Michelle Obama in that quote because of the fact that we are always becoming. We are always, uh, we always have the opportunity to become better, to become more wiser, and just to become more aware of who we are and what our purpose is. Our purpose sometimes doesn't remain the same thing. Sometimes it definitely grows with the hardships that are obstacles that we may have in life. Uh, 2020 was the great example of how many of us, I'm sure many of you, had to push past your norm and create whatever the new normalcy was. And I believe that's a part of the becoming. So one of the reasons why I strongly support being under construction because I think that our brains and our mental capacity is always under construction. There's never going, never going to be a time when we have just arrived. We're always in a state of where we can learn and become better and more. Yes, yes, yes. Continually growing. Again, passing it on to Miss Asia. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Miss Shantilly. What lessons did you learn from the corporate world that helps you now in the entrepreneurial world? Um, excellent question. I would say the biggest thing I learned in the corporate world is um, how I want my culture and how I want people to be um, accepted, the type of feeling or interaction when people hear of College Thriver, when they deal with College Thriver, um, focusing on the bigger picture. Yes, we all have goals. Yes, we all have um, aspirations. But to make the people also feel like part of a community is important for me. So as I build my platform, I'm always thinking of how does this make them feel? <laughs> um, my my you know dream is to bring fun and entertainment to education because the college admissions process is so hard and people get stressed out and, and if they don't get, get accepted into those colleges, um, I mean, they really feel like their life is over and it's not. So I just really want to, you know, be able to bring all of that experience through leadership, leading with integrity and say, hey, I'm ready to shake this up and I'm ready to do it my way. Amazing. When she said the college admission process is stressful, who hit the nail right on the head, man. Well, we are so thankful to have this company here to help us. 
So I'm going to pass it on to Miss Ruth. Thank you, Asia. Um, Ms. Gaines, I did some research and I've seen that you're a mentor for younger girls. My question is, what makes you want to be a mentor for younger girls? Great question, Ruth. Um, I wanted to be a mentor for younger girls um, during my younger years being raised in the foster care system. I had a lot of amazing people that basically took me under their wings and gave me great advice. And I feel because of them, I was able to choose um, the college that I attend, which is University of South Florida. I was able to make a lot of great choices and I feel mentors are extremely important. Um, even I'm older, one of my mentors are on here. You always need someone, Dr. Shante, um, if you need advice, someone that you know you can trust to talk to. Um, so I, I wanted to be a mentor because I had amazing and I still have amazing mentors in my life. And I wanted to pass those lessons, those values, everything I've learned to the younger girls in the community. Thank you, Ms. Gaines. Um, I, once again, I will be passing it down to Ms. Maya. Thank you. So, Ms. King, when I was reading about you, I was in awe of your accomplishments and your contributions. And we all know that women are as capable of doing just as much and even more than our male counterparts. And in light of this new wave of open discussions on mental health awareness, would you please share with us um, how you cope with the physical, mental, and spiritual tolls of being such an accomplished executive? Definitely a lot of prayer. Um, for me, I grew up in a, in a Christian household and um, I know no other way in, in being able to ma maintain your peace of mind than going to the person who actually provides that peace in your life. Um, so for me, um, prayer would definitely be a big asset and being able to juggle and maintain all of the responsibilities and just everything that we as women, professional women, have on our plate. If we don't take the time just to be still, to be quiet, to take the time for self-care, um, you can really get burnt out if you don't slow down sometimes and just take a deep breath like Shante was saying. Um, I think it's just so important that we really, you know, take the time to regroup. If we, you know, continue to run rampant, you know, we won't be good for others that we're trying to serve in the community or ourselves. So we really have to take the time for self-care, to pray, to meditate, and really focus on us sometimes. It's, it's great to focus on others and to give back but we really have to pour back into ourselves just as well as we give to others. Yes, it's I'm I'm all I'm now learning more of how to take care of myself and my needs mentally. So I thank you, Chelsea. Yes, and I know that's right because we have to, especially as ladies of color, we have to just take some time to run that bath water, get a facial mask, and chill. Uh, <laughs> And Dr. Shante, you are just providing counsel to everyone. And it is definitely assuring to know that women on the women on this panel are and have been mentoring each other um, for a long time. And for us young girls to see where it's got them professionally is definitely awe-inspiring. Um, so Dr. Stubbs, what is a barrier of many that you may uh, face counseling the youth and their families uh, via your new image youth center nonprofit? Um, one being uh, the taboo of mental health in the Black community. Um, I ask this because we are living in a time of upheaval, upheaval, pardon me, where there is a consistent trend of overlooking, minimizing, and ignoring mental health issues within the African American community and sidelining of the barriers that we face to mental health services, like the cost of care and lack of health insurance and cultural competence, um, you know, among mental health professionals. So let us know some of the barriers that you face. Yes, definitely important question. Thank you so much for asking. So one of the barriers that I actually faced earlier on uh, was the fact of number one, that there was the notion that black people didn't do counseling or therapy and no one kind of trusted that fact or they felt like it was people being too much in their business. So really it took the time of me being able to cultivate that relationship with the, my community so that they began to learn to trust me first and understood that when they shared their most intimate 
issues with me, it was not going to be heard on the street. So at the end of the day, I'm still young, uh, relatively young. And so people just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to go back and just hear or, or say what they were um, telling me and so forth. So that trust had to be developed. But then even then understanding that if they have certain insurances and even a Medicaid, that insurance was free, um, not insurance, but that therapy could be free for them. Many of them didn't even know this and they had Medicaid for years and years and years. So the barriers definitely exist because the knowledge was not there. It was not shared with our communities enough to understand that therapy is normal, is for everybody, it does not have a color on it. And guess what? It can look something as simple as us talking in a group and everybody expressing themselves. And it can mean something as simple as a moment of meditation or even just reflecting back on where you've come from. So when we think therapy, we're thinking lying on the couch, we're thinking very strategic, which that is part of the process, but it doesn't have to look like that. So that's one of the reasons why play therapy is so important for the community that I serve because everybody can relate to play. Right. No, no, I definitely did. It's like therapy with something's wrong with me, but it's definitely not that. And I love that you first established that trust and then went on to educate your community on a very well-rooted system. Um, so, Miss Asia. Thank you. Thank you. So, Miss Lee, quick question. <laughs> if you have ever felt down during this season, what did you do to help you remember your purpose? You said during this season or just any time of my life? I just want to understand the question. Any time in your life, any time. Okay. Um, well, I feel like we all deserve a temper tantrum every now and again. <laughs> so um, I definitely, I grew up in a household where um, we were taught to suppress our emotions and not really express ourselves. So sometimes I actually will go quiet or go ghost. Um, but as I'm developing and getting older, I'm realizing, okay, that's not healthy for me. Um, so when I get down now, I try to just like, um, I love my Epsom salt bath, my essential oils. Um, and sometimes I'll tell my husband like, Hey, let's go out. I need to be out. I need to process, you know, what's happening. So I think everybody has a different way, but I think, um, as long as you realize that you're down and you don't stay down, but it is okay to say, Hey, I'm down right now, because once you address it, now you have the opportunity to overcome it. So for me, I love music. I definitely use music. I just start dancing, going crazy, just uh, shaking things up um, to come out of that slump. So the most important thing is you can get down. That's not a problem. Just don't stay there. I like that ending. You can get down. That's not a problem, but don't stay there. That, that's a word right there. <laughs> I'm going to pass it on to Miss Ruth. Thank you, Asia. Um, Ms. Gangs, a lot of us young students and young black African American women, we want to build a business, but we don't know if we're capable of doing it or if we can do it mentally or physically. My question for you today is how does it feel like to be the owner of your own business? Great question. Um, to be honest, it felt great and I probably will never go back to the corporate world. I didn't realize what I was missing um, or the freedom. It is a lot of work. I'm not going to say it's easy um, being like I'm still here, as you guys can see. And most of my days I'm here late. I'm here early mornings. I'm here late um, to own my business. It does feel good. But I'm going to tell you, it can get really, really stressful. Um, you have to find balance. And I think that's one thing I've learned um, over the years is finding the balance between being a full time entrepreneur, being a mom and being a wife. Um, there are good and bad of everything. But I think you have to learn to just balance it, balance it and make um, put your priorities first, meaning that I don't put nothing before my family. And when I'm here, I make sure that I'm productive. I make sure that I'm delegating. So it feels great. I want to say that, but I don't want to say that everything is always easy. I want to say you have to put in work and I'm always willing to work and to improve my business and to see what I can do better so that it it could be, you know, as easy every day as I continue to work on it. So it's been great leaving the corporate world, but I did put in a lot of work um, to be where I am today. Thank you so much for your input. Um, I will be passing it down to Maya. 
Thank you. So this next question has a few questions within it. So feel free to ask me to restate them as we answer them. So it goes without saying that you are a mentor, educator, and inspiration for many young individuals, not only women. Who do you think has left the biggest imprint on you as a person? Who is your inspiration for inspiring? And how important is it to be the best version of ourselves when it comes to being a role model for the impressionable youth? Thank you so much for the questions. Um, I would say my uh, inspiration definitely uh, comes from my mom. Um, I was able to watch her grow up as a thriving entrepreneur. And so even though I have 15 plus years in the corporate environment, I always knew that I wanted to segue into entrepreneurship. Um, because it was in my blood. So I would definitely say that she's the, the the pivotal factor into me pursuing entrepreneurship and definitely a major inspiration in my life. I saw her through the ups, the downs, but, you know, through it all, she was, um, she persevered through it all and she ended up on top. She was a, a broker of her own real estate firm um, and a pastor's wife who, um, who really was a, uh, a mentor and uh, an inspiration to many within the community. Um, the next question, I would say, um, I believe you said who um, is someone who, another person who is, inspires me within the community, if, if that was correct? Yes, just in case, you know, the, the, your answers were different, who inspires you to inspire others? So okay. that was the second question. They're very similar, the first two. <laughs> yes, definitely. But no worries. Um, I would definitely say uh, another person within the the community who's a, a big inspiration to me would would be Oprah Winfrey. Um, she had to go through a lot of uh, trials in order to get to where she is. And that's just a testament of, of women um, persevering and uh, not giving up on their dreams. And so for me, I would definitely say um, she is definitely a major inspiration within my life um, as I'm able to see her progression um, through everything that she went through to make it to where she is today. And just like um, some of the other women were saying, it's not easy. Um, as Maggie was saying, it's definitely not easy. It's not an easy road. It's not for the faint at heart. But we have so many other women who have come before us who have been able to, you know, break through those chains and, and get to the top. So it's just a, a testament to the fact that when you keep going and keep pressing and keep pursuing your goals and your passions in life, that it is possible that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. Um, so I would definitely say Oprah Winfrey for an inspiration for my life. Um, and then the last question, could you repeat it, please? Of course. And before I say it, I just, I love that you noted how we're not all alone. Like we are all powerful and we're doing our own thing and we can build off of each other. So um, here it is. How important is it to be the best version of ourselves when it comes to being a role model for the impressionable youth? Definitely. We have um, the younger generation is is watching us. You know, everyone that's on this panel tonight, I'm sure that you can um, testify um, to the younger generation really taking a mental note of, of how we carry ourselves, the the goals and the accomplishments that we're that we're achieving. Um, and I'm sure all of us have been have younger uh, individuals, whether they're male or female, that have you know told us how proud they are of us or or told us that we're an inspiration. So we can never forget that we have the younger generation who's watching. So we definitely have to be mindful of the decisions that we make um, to walk in excellence, um, to treat people how we would wanna be treated. Um, and I think that's just so crucial and, and important for us to never forget. Thank you so much. And that's a wonderful reminder. Chelsea? Yes. And was anyone just reminded, cause I'm sorry, when, you're, when you were speaking on um, the generations of strong black women. I was just hearing black is king in my <laughs> in my head in her own <laughs> digit. I was like, oh my goodness. Yes. Well a black beauty would point it. It's like, oh my goodness. Anyways, pardon me. So the doctor starts. According to your LinkedIn, you are an Edgewater alum, the pride of College Park in Orlando. Go Eagle. Okay. So how do you reach back and pour the mission of New Image Youth Center into the College Park community. 
So actually, when I saw your question, I said, ah, actually, I'm not doing anything with the College Park youth. So the <laughs> College Park youth, just so you know, although we are less than three miles away from each other, the zip codes are different and the lifestyle is totally different. So right here in the Paramore community, the average income from a household is less than less than $25,000 a year. And three miles down the road, which is College Park, the income triples almost three to four times. So I know that I was called to do the good in the hood. And although uh, Edgewater is in the College Park is another neighborhood, um, the services that I provide are not necessarily needed as much in that community. That is where I attend it because that is um, I live closer in a neighborhood such as College Park. So, but it's not much that I'm doing to give back to the College Park community at this time. Okay, that's no problem at all, but thank you for informing me. And Ms. Asia, let us know. Thank you, thank you. So, Ms. Lee, uh, my question is, with your business, do you have a story of you helping students that have come to you, you know, any student that just kind of made you welt up and you really realize this is my purpose and I'm going to keep fighting for this. Um, wow. I, I've i been doing this 10 years, so I'm trying to think of that one. Um, so let me see. So I did have a student that really, really um, touched, just touched my life. I had a student that actually was battling cancer and they called me up, they got me on the phone and, you know, we were just chatting and talking and then they were telling me, you know, I got to the question of, okay, well, hey, what's holding you back? And it was like, well, I'm battling cancer and how do you, how do you overcome that? Like, who teaches you, who prepared you for things like this? So I think for me, just like, it's almost like I'm a counselor in a way, just don't have my license. Um, but that was the most meaningful conversation because I realized at that point, if a student with cancer doesn't have an excuse, what excuse is possible? What excuse is really like worthy of saying that, you know, you can't do it. Um, so I think that that's when I, when I knew like, wow, this student called me, they're going through chemo and they, and thank God they got me because I'm that, you know, person to inspire and, you know, help them overcome that. But um, yeah, that, that blew me away and that changed my life for sure. Wow, thank you for sharing. I probably would have cried over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have cried over the phone hearing that story, but being an educator and just being somebody that inspires others, you are doing an amazing job. <laughs> well, thank you. In, in that case, that student inspired me because every day we want to give up. Every day we have an excuse. We get mad. Tire goes flat. We got past two bills. But um, I always am reminded if a student call me with cancer and they make, they wanted to make that decision to say, I'm not letting anything stop me, then what excuse do I have really? So sorry to interrupt. <laughs> it is totally okay. Thank you so much. I'm gonna now pass it on to Ruth. Thank you, Asia. Ms. Gaines, you own your own business. You have a family of your own and you know, like you're mentoring younger kids. My question for you today is what, what was the biggest challenge you faced down this road? Um, great question. One of the biggest challenges that I faced going down this road was um, delegating. I have a very, very hard time delegating and I had to learn that I hired her help and I needed them to help me. So, you know, I hired a team and most of the time, even my secretary, I'll still end up doing some of the stuff that I should let her do. Um, so delegating and finding that balance was the two hardest, I would say, um, things that I've experienced in this journey with entrepreneurship and balancing life in general. Um, I'm getting better. I'm going to be honest. You know, I still like to hold on, especially with saving our daughters or even with the business. I don't know. I just be feeling like everything is my baby. And if I do it, it's going to be done right. So I'm getting better with delegating. But I would say that's the one of the biggest challenges that um, I face. And I'm going to be honest, I'm still working on letting go. Thank you so much. I will be passing it down to Maya. 
thanks again. Oh my gosh, I'm already getting sad. We only have a few more of these laps. Okay, so our communities know, Ms. King, that you're committed to aiding and feeding the growth of many individuals and organizations. Introspectively speaking, what are some of the goals you see yourself and your business or any organization that you're a part of surpassing in the future? Yes, thank you so much for the question. Um, I would definitely say uh, a goal that I am expecting to achieve in the near future is opening up uh, other franchises to the Miss and Mrs. Corporate America organization. We've been in business for about 13 years, and it's a goal now of mine to really um, kind of break barriers um, within that sector and be on the realm of other large competitions like Miss America and Miss Universe. And I know in order to do that, we have to open up state competitions. So um, that's definitely a goal of mine um, and being able to spread more awareness throughout the world um, and to eventually go international um, and to break barriers in that realm. Wow, always moving forward. I love it. Chelsea, back on to you. <laughs> Don't do it. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if we would pass it to Ms. Keldra. We would continue for that one more lap. Thank you so much, uh, Chelsea and Maya. Yes, just want to have a quick reminder to everyone um, that we will be having to wrap up our conversation soon. So if you have any questions for any of our guests, please go ahead and drop them in the chat um, as we will be wrapping up our conversation soon. This has been phenomenal, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so Chelsea, if you want to kick things off for our final questions to our guests. Yes, of course, of course. So... Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again so much for visiting our platform and for experiencing Black Orlando Tech's Q&A session with these panelists. Um, so now we will open up questions in the comments um, for, yeah, for any other questions for our panelists. So please feel free. Oh, actually, see our notifications. So let's get to it. Let me see. Actually, I'm not sure if these are actually the questions. Let's see. So, and if there are any questions from the you need to pose your final question uh, to your to your guest. Okay, sounds awesome. So, uh, Dr. Sophia, one more, one more. <laughs> so I'll try to make it worth it. So the let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, yes. Okay. So the start of your story is the part of your story that I personally find most inspiring as it was that one invitation to a group of youth that blossomed into your nonprofit, now being the New Image Youth Center, that is helping underprivileged families and providing that safe haven for the youth in the community. Um, and so pretty simplistic, why was this so, so important to you? You know, I'm going to answer this question wholeheartedly and selfishly um, because at the time I knew that I was destined to do something. I just wasn't sure what it was. I was 21 and trying to find my own reason why. And it was some kids who were running in inside, like uh, using a grocery basket to be pushed in the middle of the street. And that's re really where I identified my purpose right then. At the moment, I didn't know what I was doing, but I invited them inside to pay, play that one game of Monopoly. And that one game of Monopoly turned into the new Image Youth Center. So, you know, it, that was so important to me because I look back now and I often tell people, do not despise small, very small, sometimes not the most prettiest presentations. Don't don't despise these type of beginnings because they really can create the life that you were designed to live and it can change so many others. So that would be my encouragement for all of you. You know, I don't care what it looks like. Every, any situation can be your next presentation for what's next for you. And that's exactly what it was. And here we are almost 17 years later. Yeah, that was definitely the one at facet of the story that struck out to me as my parents are also nonprofit organizers. It's like, oh my goodness, what an impactful beginning. So now I'll pass it on to, I believe, Miss Anissa to close this out. Actually, ladies, it looks like we do have a question in the chat before we wrap things up. Yes. Um, Rose, a uh, bot's esteemed executive director, has a question. Um, so Anissa, uh, if Anissa, would you mind um, posing this question to everyone? Most definitely. Okay, so Rose asked, what have the ladies from Dr. Phillips High School learned from this panel? So I think we can go in our usual round and then I'll jump in at the end. And um, 
just talk about your favorite part of what you've learned today and like how you've connected with these ladies. All right, perfect. Chelsea, we'll throw it to you first. Okay. <laughs> this order of board have mercy. Okay. But <laughs> okay, what have I learned from this panel? So I would say from um, our ladies today, I know I want to definitely thank um, Dr. Stubbs first as I chose you because your story resonates and with me personally, as I said before, my parents are nonprofit organizers um, with their um, or, uh, organization, Orlando Island Talent. Um, and so when I was reading your story, I was like, oh my goodness, this, this woman just from one invitation uh, for a Monopoly game turns into a nonprofit that's helping um, the Paramore community and the youth, which I believe will lead our um our future. And so that was definitely impactful. And then from just the ladies overall, I appreciate you all's input because as I stated, as young girls are navigating the world right now as young women of color, along with our numerous intersections. And so for you all to um, input your life experiences, your experiences as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, as CEOs was definitely awe-inspiring and we'll take that on to our life journey ahead of us. And so I'll pass it on to Miss Asia. Asia, before, before before you answer the question, um, I did want to give Miss um, Lee an opportunity to sort of um, say goodbye to everyone. She does have to hop off for another event. So Miss Lee, we want to thank you so, so much for joining <laughs> us. Um, and any final words before you, before you have to hop off? No, thank you so much. And just um, want to let the ladies know that with God, all things are possible. So just keep the faith and, and know that you are here for a bigger purpose. But I am going to stay and listen to what Miss Asia learned because she did interview me. Yes. Um, so then I'll hop off after that. But congratulations to all the ladies and, and good luck. <laughs> awesome. Asia, throw it to you. Okay. So what I have learned from this great opportunity is really trust your gut and go with that fire inside of you. Um, everyone on this panel has had a time in their life where they wanted to be more than their current situation. And it just became something so inspirational to me especially, and I hope to all the other ladies from, the, from Black Student Union as well, just go with your gut, trust that fire, and just see where God leads you because you never know. He may lead you to something so much greater than something that you've never seen before. And I just, I love it. Thank you so much, Ms. Lee and everyone here for this amazing opportunity. All right, Anissa, if you wanna pose the next question to the ladies. <laughs> so we have a second question and it says, what um, do the community leaders have planned for their organizations this year? If you guys have any big events that you would like to share with us, we'd love to hear. Anyone who wants to kick things off. Sorry, just reading through the chat, I was preparing my answer to the previous question. So um, I saw my name was called but actually, no, I'll pass it on to the community leaders. Sorry. I'll go. Um, well, Saving Our Daughters currently, we are meeting bi-weekly virtually, and we've been doing that since COVID. Um, normally around this time of the year, we have a big Easter basket giveaway at the Orlando Rescue Mission Shelter. And unfortunately this year, we're not able to have it. So what we did is we made um, basket, not basket, um, hygiene for the parents. So all the previous years, we always did something for the kids, but this year we made um, hygiene package and that's what we're still doing, collecting more hygiene package so we can give around the Easter and plus Mother's Day. But um, our lessons um, is posted on our Facebook page and any youth, you you guys are welcome to attend. It's every other Wednesday. And I think our next one, we'll be having eight cents in a jar coming in um, to teach our youth about financing and um, just learning early on on how to manage their money. So that's what we have coming up. So with us at New Image Youth Center, The Good in the Hood, we're actually just getting back into some of our normal programs. We had stopped last year because of COVID. So we're just kind of getting the hang of things again. And uh, we're also looking to find a way that we can still uh, provide some services to our kids who have had to move out of the neighborhood. 
Um, COVID, of course, presented a lot of issues. And right now, Paramore is being changed by the day. Prices are going up on rent and so forth. So we're still trying to find a way to be able to accommodate some of those students so that they are not being ripped away from like a family that they've been with for like a long time. So that's our goal. And we are year round programs. So if anyone's ever interested in volunteering or being a part of any way, please reach out. Don't hesitate. Awesome. Anissa? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we're having our annual competition um, in September. So it's going to be September 16th through the 18th of this year at the Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort at Universal Studios. So I welcome um, all of the uh, members uh, on the panel tonight and everyone from Dr. Phillips, who's on the panel as well, um, to come out to um, see what it's about and um, just to cheer on uh, women that are doing great things um, within their workplace and their community. Um, and then in spring of 2022, we're looking to have our Purple Globe Awards, um, which is an Oscar style award show uh, honoring women and business. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. King. Um, before we pr present our final question, um, I did want to give Maya and Ruth a chance to answer our previous question about what you were able to learn and gather from tonight's panel. So Maya, I will throw it to you. What have you taken away tonight? Thank you. So the prior to this physical well, virtual panel when reading about Miss Anissa King, I was in a state of incredulence. I was at my computer, my laptop, and I was like, I need to keep this forward momentum and forward mentality because there's so much that I can do. And during the panel itself, I just listened to all the answers and just really listening to how we all build on top of each other and that I need to remind myself sometimes that I need to build off of my peers I need to build off of my officers in the BSU around my friends so we can all, you know, work together and do great things. So thank you all. And thank you for having me. Awesome. Ruth, what have you taken away tonight? I learned that it's okay, you know, to stay down and go down and have like a bad day or a bad week, but it's not okay to stay down fully for like for the rest of your life. You could go down, but you got to find a way to get yourself back up. And I also learned that we just got to tr put trust in ourselves and say, yes, we could do this because don't nobody else going to tell us we could do something unless we tell ourselves that we could do this. If we want to open up a business, yes, we could open up the business and we should have self-doubt ourselves. Thank you. I love it. I love it. That's sticking with me too, Ruth. I agree. Anissa, I will throw it to you to ask the final, final question um, for the night. So our final question is, what advice do the leaders have for our young people? Now, I know we've thrown out a lot of great advice, a lot of gems tonight, but if there was one final thing that you could say that would you think would spark something or kind of be the start for somebody on their journey, if you could give just that one really important advice to any of the people watching or even our ladies who have been interviewing you, what would it be? Ms. Maggie, we'll throw it to you first. Um, an advice I would give is to truly be true to yourself. No, no matter what you decide to do, no matter what path you choose, always be true to yourself and find your passion and your passion will lead you the right way, where you need to be. Love it. Dr. Shante? Yes. So the advice that I would give to the amazing, should I say, uh, young women who have interviewed us is just um, a, a lot of what Maggie said as well, but also making sure that whatever you do, once you graduate, that you're doing what you want to do. Uh, we'll have a lot of outside influences, a lot of people telling us what we should do, but really follow whatever it is your heart is telling you to do. Because once you do that, then it will connect with that passion and you will find that um, you will be on the path to success. So whatever it is, you know, channel yourself, ask yourself, if, is this what I want to do or is this what other people are wanting me to do? And make sure that you're always answering the call to yourself first. Love that. Ms. King? Yes, I would definitely say to be authentic. Um, 
pursue your passion because like a lot of other ladies said that once you pursue your passion, the money will follow. So don't worry about chasing the money and chasing the dollar bills because once you get into the rim of really doing what you love, it's not going to feel like work um, and then the money will come. Um, and don't give up. You know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be treacherous sometimes. You might might even cry. Um, the entrepreneurship um, world is, is is definitely not easy. Um, but once you pursue it and you get into the realm of really, you know, getting into the groove of things and, you know, getting into the pattern and finding balance, it can definitely be rewarding. So I definitely say don't give up. Um, and lastly, I would say find your tribe. Find people um, that will build you up, that will support you, that will encourage you, even if it's a mentor, even if it's a, a women's organization that really um, empowers women. Um, definitely finding your tribe is definitely a key asset um, to making sure that you are around positive people um, that are, are going in the direction that you're going in. So I would definitely say those are the, the elements that I would like um, to leave with, with the audience tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anissa King. And I'm going to toss it over to Anissa for uh, any final closeout from Black Student Union. So we would just like to really thank Black Orlando Tech for collaborating with us today. Um, part of centering our students in at Dr. Phillips High School and trying to give them a space to be themselves and really thrive academically is also looking for outside resources in the community to connect them with once they leave um, uh, high school and pursue onto other things. It's really important to have your safe space and have communities to go to where you can just sound off your concerns, be in a space that's going to really nurture you and help you thrive. So I'm very grateful. We are all very grateful for Black Orlando Tech for <laughs> allowing us to collaborate with you today. And we are also open to further community service opportunities and collaborations with other um, Black small-owned businesses in the area and within the community. So please feel free to reach out to us. Our social media on Instagram is the DP Black Panthers. And don't hesitate to DM us or reach out and we'll make sure to get to you as soon as possible and just forge these connections so that our students can continue to collaborate and get gems like this. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anissa. Thank you so much, ladies. Job well done, future mini Oprahs. We have here boss women, entrepreneurs, community leaders, and servants. These are women who serve, ladies and gentlemen, and we appreciate you for joining us on tonight's conversation. Just a few final closeout notes from BOT. Uh, so as everyone may or may not know, BOT is gearing up for an, a very, very amazing and busy year ahead. So. Um, if you're ready to get engaged and, and plug into what our mission and what we're doing here in the community, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can email us at info at blackorlandotech.org to learn more about how you can get involved. And of course, visit our website, blackorlandotech.org to learn everything ab about what we have coming up, events and other initiatives. The main initiative coming up for you to know about is the next round of the tech startup series. So if you are interested in learning a new tech skill, you're ready to pivot in your career or pivot in your business, this is definitely the initiative you wanna get plugged into. So all the details are on our website and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Ladies, we're gonna have to do a part two because this was phenomenal. So many gems were dropped. Um, remember to like, comment and share this live with your community. It will live on BOT's YouTube and Facebook page for everyone to watch at a later date. So ladies, until next time, we're gonna close everything out. Have a phenomenal night and we will chat with everyone later. Bye everyone. <laughs>